Hey, thanks for joining us. We're going to be talking about a different way to manage your diabetes, which is multiple daily injections. So uh, what exactly is MDI treatment? So multiple daily injections of insulin, sometimes referred to as MDI, um, is a way that we try to mimic what the pancreas would naturally do for a patient if they didn't have diabetes. The, the way that we do this is we use two types of insulin. One which is a long-acting insulin called a basal, and one which is a fast-acting insulin called a bolus insulin. Okay, so what is the difference between those two types of insulin? I think the easiest way to explain that is to draw you a picture. Oh, of course. So our pancreas naturally would secrete a little bit of insulin all day long, okay? With a nice smooth little profile. This is called the basal insulin. Basal insulin is not meant to bring down your blood sugars. It's just meant to keep them nice and stable and prevent them from rising any further. And then under natural conditions, any time that we would eat, our pancreas would secrete these bursts of insulin to cover our meals. And this is the bolus component of the multiple daily injection regimen. So designed to cover the meal. So most people, if they have three meals a day, would have three corresponding spikes of bolus insulin. That's right, you got it. And so would there be two types of insulin injections that you'd be using? Yeah, so the, the basal insulin, it's some of the long-acting insulins, okay? So for example, Lantus insulin, Levomir, or NPH insulin. These are the insulins that provide you that nice, flat little profile to keep the sugars from rising over the course of the day. The bolus insulins, so at meal times, can be given as regular insulin, Novorapid, Humalog, or Pedra. So this has a long profile of action, whereas these insulins are short acting because they're designed to be in and out of your system as the calories you consumed are covered. So what if your sugar levels were already high going into the meal? So if we look at the bolus component itself, we need to give insulin to cover the food you're about to consume. But you're right, sometimes we need to give you a little bit extra if your sugar is already high going into a meal. So let's say we're aiming for you to have a blood sugar of seven before a meal. And that's what we want, this is our goal. But let's say that before you have lunch, your sugar is 12, and now you're going to eat. So we want to give you insulin to cover this difference between what your glucose level actually is and what it should be. Then on top of that, we need to give you insulin to cover the food you're about to consume, right? So some people will have what's called a correction scale. So we give you bolus insulin, we give you a bolus to correct for the high sugar, and then we also give you a bolus for your meal. Those are both bolus insulin. It's gonna be the exact same type of insulin, so if you're, for example, using Humalog, you will take a certain amount of units of Humalog for the food, plus extra units of Humalog for the meal. So let's, for example, say that your lunch Humalog dose is five units. You will take five units for the food plus extra insulin to bring the blood sugar down. People will generally have what's called a correction scale that they follow to determine how much extra insulin to take when the sugar is high. This is an example of one of these correction scales that one of my patients uses. So every time they have a meal, they check their blood sugar before the meal, and then they look across to find out how much extra insulin to take if their blood sugar is elevated. So in our example, if your blood sugar was 12, here's 12, you would take two extra units bring down the blood sugar, plus the five that you would take for your meal, okay? So you would take five units plus two 
equals, for that particular meal, you would take seven units total. Interesting. And so this would be something that right away you'd be able to identify someone's uh, correction levels, or would you slowly sort of understand better how they're reacting to these insulins? So your endocrinologist will be the one to give you one of these correction scales when they think it's most appropriate. And be individualized for your case. It'll be individualized for your case, that's right. Great. Okay, that kind of seems to cover a lot of it. Any other things that we need to touch on? I think that covers it. So maybe what we'll move on to is we'll actually show you how to do the in insulin injections. Okay, let's do that.